Greetings traders and welcome back to another In-Depth with Chris episode. In today's discussion we will be talking about the McGinley Indicator. This is an indicator that isn't as common, but that's really just due to the lack of marketing behind it. Sometimes indicators that are valuable are just simply hard to find because not a whole lot of traders use them and not just because they're no good. So we're going to talk about the calculations that go into the McGinley Indicator as well as how the charts can be read once it's applied and some of the different aspects of it. But before we go any further, please click that like and subscribe button down below so I can keep coming out with the videos for you guys. But without further ado, let's dive on into it. Despite the widespread usage of the simple and exponential moving averages, the McGinley indicator is very comparable with its approach to the market, but arguably more effective when understood correctly. So what is the McGinley Dynamic Indicator? Well, the McGinley Dynamic Indicator is an advanced type of a moving average that adjusts for shifts in the market speed. We can think of it as a moving average with a filter. This smooths out the price data to potentially avoid the whipsaws. This technical analysis tool was designed to solve the main issue with moving averages themselves their reliance on fixed time periods. Alternatively, to overcome the problem of varying market speeds and provide a more accurate reflection, here came the McGinley Indicator. The McGinley Dynamic Indicator was invented by John R. McGinley, who was an editor of the Market Technicians Association's Journal of Technical Analysis. Isn't that a mouthful? It is relatively new and came as a result of McGinley's efforts in the 1990s to design a responsive indicator capable of adjusting its in relation to the market speed, hence why it was named Dynamic. The McGinley Dynamic Indicator was first published in the Journal of Technical Analysis in 1997. Similar to moving averages and other indicators, the McGinley Dynamic isn't intended to be used on its own and just simply provide a trade signal right off the bat, but instead it's best used to get an idea of what the market's trying to do or currently doing in coupling that with outside price knowledge. It's common for traders to couple the McGinley indicator with an RSI or MACD, for example. To fully uncover the theory behind the McGinley indicator, we should first by saying a couple words about the moving averages that do exist and their deficiencies. There are two main types of moving averages. We have a simple moving average and an exponential moving average. We usually refer to these as an SMA and an EMA. The former takes past closing prices and divides them by the number of periods to smooth out the price action. So for example, a 10 period moving average would take the past 10 closing prices and then just simply divide them by 10. The smoother the line, the slower it reacts to prices. That is why longer term moving averages move slower than shorter term moving averages. On the other hand, the EMA, which is arguably the more complete of the two, responds to prices much quicker. The reason is it puts more weight on the latest periods rather than it does the older ones. What both indicators fail to do, however, is adjust to the speed of the market. This leaves the trader wondering whether to use a 10-day, 20-day, or a 50-period moving average in a fast or slow market. In other words, the trader might apply the indicator inappropriately and thus miss out on crucial information. McGinley wanted to change this by designing the indicator that adjusts to the current market speed itself. His end goal was to ensure that the indicator's line hugs the price line and reduces price separations and whipsaws in both fast and slow markets. Markets. Another important thing is that the McGinley Dynamic Indicator overcomes the lag coming from the fixed time length model that standard moving averages employ. In today's markets, when price reacts extremely quickly to events, the Dynamic Indicator is becoming more and more popular as it manages to reflect and respond to them better. 
So similar to moving averages, the McGinley Dynamic Indicator informs the trader about the average price of the security over the set period of time. It does this by helping smooth out the noise. The indicator provides a better representation of the market dynamics and the speed changes in the current price action. As a result, the idea is that the trader will get a smoother and more responsive line on their chart. Another thing that the McGinley Dynamic Indicator tells us is that by following its line, we are basically taking the lag out of the equation, or at least as much as possible in today's markets, and we can be more informed on our analysis based on an accurate price action representation. This is important because it's adjusting to the speed of the market. That's what makes it different. This allows us to speed up or slow down as the market speeds up and slow down with our read being brought to us by the McGinley indicator. It is worth noting that the price will have some degree of lag, however it is greatly improved over the standard moving average variation. According to McGinley himself, the dynamic indicator is intended to serve as a smoothing mechanism, but it is best used when used in conjunction with outside knowledge. The formula for the calculation of the McGinley Dynamic Indicator is as follows. This is going to be your main one up here at the top. Some websites will show you this one at the bottom. It is quite rare. You probably won't see it. They will both come out to the same information, but there is something to be aware of, and that's the fact that down here, K is an extra variable that is going to be equal to the constant 60% of the selected period of N. Once again, this is not as common. The top one is the more common variation. So this is the one, if you are really into math, this is the one to go through. I am not a math teacher and I'm not going to teach this math to you. This is just once again for those of you that are very, very intuitive and want to know exactly how the indicator is calculating its levels. The MDI is going to be equal to the current McGinley dynamic. Then the MDI minus one is going to be the previous McGinley dynamic. The close is going to be equal to the closing price and the N is going to be equal to the moving average period. All of these things also apply down here. The only difference is down here we also have the K where K equals the constant 60% of the selected period of N. But nonetheless, once again, if you're interested, here it is. If not, onward we go. The setup of the McGinley Dynamic Indicator is quite simple and straightforward on pretty much every trading platform that does currently offer it. After you select the indicator, the only adjustments that we really make is for the value of N, which we just talked about in the formula briefly, and that defines the number of periods. So as we mentioned, if we wanted to make it replicate a 20-day moving average, we would just simply set the length of the McGinley Dynamic to 10, and that's just due to the smoothing factor that the McGinley has. Usually on most platforms, the default value for N is set to 14 periods, just like most moving averages. This is what it looks like on a one week SPX chart. So we have the S&P 500 index here, and this is showing a 14 period version of it. Now pay close attention to this yellow line as we switch it from a 14 period to a seven period. With the seven period, just like a moving average would, it now follows price much more closely, which means the indicator is more sensitive and is going to replicate the shifts in the market's direction quicker. But obviously there is no right or wrong setting. It's up to you to decide which setting is best suited for your trading style and the current market condition. We can use the McGinley indicator to help confirm uptrends, downtrends, and even reversals. In an uptrend, we should notice that price is staying above the McGinley line itself, and the line should be sloping upwards. In a downtrend, it should be the exact opposite, where the McGinley line should be sloping downwards with price staying well below it. In a scenario where we have a hard intersection of the McGinley line and price, this is said to be a characteristic of a reversal to come in the market. Depending on which way price has been crossing, if it's crossing from below to above, we would consider this a bullish scenario and anticipate some bullish activity. If we see it crossing from above to below, then we may be anticipating anticipating some bearish activity to follow. We can even use the indicator to help spot sideways markets. They usually occur when the line remains horizontal for an extended period of time. So if we see the McGinley line staying relatively flat, then this is most likely going to be a range-bound market. 
As we mentioned, the McGinley dynamic is often used with other indicators such as the MACD. The MACD, which is the moving average convergence divergence, and the McGinley dynamic do complement each other quite well. On the top we have the MACD, and on the bottom we have the McGinley line. And what traders like to do is wait until the MACD, as you can see by our bubbles, crosses the signal line and then we want to wait for the candle body itself of price action to cross on the same side of the McGinley dynamic line for at least two consecutive trading periods. So that could be two consecutive candles. If this condition is met, then we would be looking to open a position in the direction of the signals request. So if we have a bearish MACD read and we have a bearish MACD cross, then we'd be looking for a sell. If we have a bullish MACD cross, on the MACD and we have a bullish MACD cross with the McGinley line, then we'd be looking for a long. This combination is usually best applied for longer term positions or swing trading strategies, not usually ideal for scalping, but that doesn't mean that you can't find a way to make it ideal for your particular strategy. The McGinley dynamic also pairs well with the relative strength index, which we refer to as the RSI. Here, instead of looking for the moment the RSI line breaks the 30 or 70, we're actually focusing on its movement around the 50 line itself. Although, according to the conventional RSI theory, situations where the line deviates around the 50 mark are considered a no-signal scenario, when it's combined with the McGinley dynamic, the case is honestly quite the opposite. As we look at this chart, we can see situations where the price closes above the McGinley dynamic line, and if the RSI for that particular period is above the 50 mark, then technical traders would consider this an opportunity to jump in for the correct associating position. Meaning, if price example is over here is above the McGinley line, and we're also above the 50 mark on the RSI, we could consider this a long scenario. A short scenario would be if price is now below the McGinley line, and we are trading below the 50 mark on the RSI. This goes on and on, over and over, and it's relatively easy to spot, so it's new trader friendly. So in conclusion, the McGinley indicator is very cool because it takes into consideration current market dynamics, meaning the market speed. It takes into consideration things that a simple or exponential moving average doesn't. We could think of it as a perfection to the simple and exponential moving average process. Even though some traders out there are never going to move away from their SMA and EMA, it's worth being aware of how the McGinley works because at the end of the day, knowledge is power. If it's something that can help your trading, then I strongly encourage practicing with it. It's something that has a very different view that a lot of indicators don't necessarily provide. And when we're trading, any edge is a valuable edge. But until next time, folks, please click that like and subscribe button down below and I'll see you soon. Cheers, folks.